This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. We're now going to go through and look at a situation whereby instead of just one individual entity having control, what we have now is a number of entities that come together, each one with an ownership interest within another entity, and those ownership interests combine, go through there, and give you what we can refer to as joint control so it could be that you have two entities that come together and own 50 50 shareholding within another enterprise uh, and that 50 50 holding gives us joint control now what we have to have there essentially for there to be joint control is that there has to be a contractual arrangement okay or a contractual agreement in place that says if both parties come together decisions will happen if two parties don't come together, then nothing will happen. So what's going to happen in order to have this joint control? There needs to be unanimous consent. So a unanimous decision needs to arise whereby all parties agree. Otherwise, nothing happens. OK, uh, so what we need to go through and do there is we need to think about the types of joint arrangements that give you joint control under this accounting standard IFRS 11. Okay, So the way in which it could get examined is that there could be a small numerical aspect like we see in the example at the end uh, that appears maybe in, say, question number one, part A, as part of your group accounts. Alternatively, there's nothing to stop the examiner throwing it in as maybe a question two or a question three that talks about the different styles of joint arrangement, whether that's joint venture, or the, is it a joint operation and how we go through and account for either of them. Okay, So what you've got there, first of all, we'll go through there and talk about a joint venture. The key bit about a joint venture as part of a joint arrangement is, again, you have two or more parties. So it could be three, uh, each of which owns, say, 33 and a third percent. And what they do is that they go through there and set up a new separate entity. Uh, and that new separate entity legally exists as a separate company. OK, and each one of the venturers uh, has an ownership interest within that other business. OK, the key bit is as you have a, a separate entity set up, which is the key to spotting a joint venture. Uh, what you have there is you have the rights to the net assets. Essentially, you have an ownership interest, don't we? Uh, with regards to shares and that ownership then represents the net assets doesn't it but the key bit about a joint venture is, is that you form a, a separate entity so maybe you could have two previous businesses uh, maybe one that goes through there and can operate mobile phones uh, another one that has got music technology and what you could go through and do there is that they could go through and set up a separate entity uh, that incorporates mobile phones with music technology. Okay, so way back in the past, we had Sony, uh, we had Ericsson. They set up a separate joint venture, which was referred to as Sony Ericsson, and they produced your, your Sony Ericsson mobile phone handsets that also incorporated uh, the pretty old now, I suppose, MP3 uh, style of music system that was on those mobile phones. Okay, key bit there is that Sony and Ericsson. Uh, had joint control over what happened within Sony Ericsson. There would have been a contractual arrangement. Maybe they own 50-50. doesn't necessarily have to be the case. Uh, it could be 60-40. Uh, so just be aware, 60-40, if there is a contractual arrangement that says we have to have joint control, then it is a joint venture. It is not a parent-subsidiary relationship for that 60% holding. So, so do be very, very careful there. If you have a joint venture, keep it that you are going to have the is that you don't have control so we can't consolidate uh so you sort of have like a little bit of influence don't we okay you can't pass any decisions you can't force people to, to take on board your idea but you can block things happening can't you because it has to be unanimous consent doesn't it everybody has to come together uh, if one party disagrees they can block the motion uh, so you do have quite a bit of influence you have significant influence maybe a little bit more than significant influence don't you uh, so what we're going to do there is we're going to account for it exactly like an associate with regards to your equity accounting. Okay. Uh, a joint operation 
Uh, essentially, there it is whereby there is no separate legal entity that entity that, that, that is created. So it does tend to happen maybe in, in the oil and gas industry. Uh, maybe what you've got there is that one business ha has got an oil well, uh, maybe in the, 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 the deepest, darkest areas of Russia. Uh, and we need to get the oil from Russia through a pipeline uh, into Europe, into Africa, wherever that may be. So maybe one company owns the pipeline, one company owns the oil well. Uh, so what they might do there is they might set up a contractual ar arrangement uh, that goes through there and says, look, well, I own this asset, you own that asset. We will share the assets, uh, each individual, one of us. And then whatever revenues and costs are incurred, we will share those revenues and we will share those costs out in relation to our percentage holdings. So that there's no separate legal entity that is set up. Uh, essentially what you have there, instead of the rights to the net assets, you have the rights to the assets and obligations to the liabilities. So we're talking about your assets, the right to your assets and your percentage ownership of it. And we're talking about your obligation to the liability that maybe you have created. OK, it's not an ownership interest in the net assets of the entity. OK, you have specific ownership of an asset and a liability, of which that is then shared out. OK, uh, the accounting treatment here uh, is everything to do with your shirt. So you record your shirt of your assets and liabilities. And then you record your share of revenue and costs in your statement of profit or loss. OK, uh, so very much different, if you like, to equity accounting. OK, here you're just really going to record your assets and liabilities on your SFP. So what you own and then what you generate from that shared ownership, you will show there is your share of the revenue and your share of the costs. OK, uh, and essentially that's it. There's nothing else to it. However, when you play around with the numbers, Sometimes they do become ever so slightly more complicated. But what I do there is just take a quick look, check that you're happy with the joint venture, whereby you have a separate legal entity that is set up for which we then equity account for that separate legal entity and a joint operation whereby there is no separate entity that is created and you just account for your assets and your liabilities on your SFP and then your share of the revenues and your share of the costs in your statement of profit or loss. And then what we'll do in the next little session, we'll go through there and play around with the numbers. So let's go through and play around with the numbers here. I'm not too worried about the numbers with a joint venture because it's just equity accounting. So your share of profit of joint venture in profit or loss and investment in joint venture within the statement of financial position. We're interested here about your joint operation, OK, or a JO for short. So we want to look at how we're going to account for this joint operation within the financial statement is it the the 31st of december 2015 okay uh, and what we have there is it says that leon has a 40 percent share of a joint operation which is a natural gas station okay uh, somebody else must have if you like the other 60 percent share of that operation uh, the following information relates to the joint arrangement activities it talks about the cost being there 15 million to construct and was completed at the start of the year. So once it's complete, we then depreciate it. And we depreciate it over 10 years, don't we? Okay. Of that natural gas station, we want to account for our share, don't we? So 40% of the 15 million. Okay. Uh, in the year, gas with a direct cost of 22 million was sold for 30. So we know what the cost was. Uh, we know what the revenue is. We need to go through then and take our share of the revenues and costs. There are also operating costs. Is it the of 1.5 million? OK, so again, we'll need to take our share of those costs. And just in case you weren't sure, assets, liabilities, revenues and costs are apportioned on the basis of the shareholding. So as you'd expect, a 40 percent holding. The key bit is just this paragraph underneath just to see what they've already done. It said Leon has only contributed and accounted for its share of the construction cost paying six million. So if you were to actually take 40 percent of. That six million or sorry, 40 percent of the 15 million. I think that should work out, isn't it, as, as six million. So that's what they've accounted for already. So when you're talking about the financial statements, 
not only do we need to think about what goes in the SFP, uh, but we also need to think as well, don't we, about what happens in the statement of profit or loss. Okay. Uh, the last sentence, which is important as well, it says the revenue and costs are receivable and payable by the other joint operator who settles amounts outstanding with Leon after the year end. So we need to go through there and set up some form of maybe receivable or payable based upon the amounts that are due uh, to or from the joint venturers. OK, and we'll talk about that in more detail as we go along. So let's first of all think about is it the statement of profit or loss? So what we've got there is we have your revenue. Your costs. So just be careful. You've got two costs, direct and is it operating costs? Uh, and what we've got is it there 30 million, so we'll work in thousands. Is it there 22 million? And was it 1.5 million? Okay, excellent. Uh, what we need to go through and do there is we need to go through, don't we, and take, is it 40% of them? So we need to apply 40% to each of those to show what we record. So within Leon's financial statements in the profit or loss, there will be 12,000 worth of revenue. Uh, there will be 8,800 is it the worth of direct costs and your operating costs will be there is it as 600 okay so all we've gone through and done that nice and straightforward is we've worked out the 40 percent of the revenues and the costs uh with regards to the sfp uh we go through there don't we and have the asset so on the statement of financial position uh, you've got there your property, plant and equipment. And we know that that is there based upon your cost, isn't it? Of 6 million. Okay, remember that's 40% of the 15. However, don't forget, we then need to look at your depreciation. Your depreciation is the 6,000. Was it over, I believe, 10 years? Which gives you, is it? 600 okay so that's your depreciation for the year uh it's the accumulated depreciation as well isn't it because we only brought the asset into use at the start of the year so some more costs that you have are your depreciation you do not need to go through there and prorate it because that depreciation it is based upon our holding already okay we've already looked at the 40 percent okay uh so what you've got there on the assets you've got is it 5400 uh, if we go through there and look at the statement of profit or loss if we total that up 12,000 less 8 800 less 600 less 600 gives me there is that 2000 uh, so 22, 30, uh, and is it 1.5? Okay. Uh, so 40% of 30,000 is 12. Uh, 8, Just double checking my arithmetic. Excellent. There we go. Okay. So yeah, 2,000. So that's, if you like, your profit that you would show within your financial statement. But in order to get that profit into the financial statements, we, we have to process a double entry, don't we? So what's actually going to go through and happen is that there will also be a receivable within Leon's books. Is it there at 2000? Because what's going to go through and happen, you're probably curious as to why, well, what's going to happen is to get those results in, we need to process a debit and a credit, don't we? So what's going to happen there is that we are going to credit our profit. Is it there with 2,000? 
So, you know, I, I would be crediting revenue, debiting expenses, etc. But the overall credit entry to profit is 2000. The other side of the entry is uh, as 2000 as well. And that's your receivable. So that's the amount due, if you like, from the other joint venture party. OK, the person who owns that 60 percent that we've entered into that contractual arrangement with them. OK, yeah, because they have probably recorded all of the revenues, all of the costs, and they need to give a little bit back to us. So 40 percent of those profits back to ourselves, Leon. OK, uh, so we have a receivable which is due from the other joint venture party of 2000, which gives us the profits of 2000. OK, an example very similar to that has been seen within the exam. Uh, it was seen within a group financial statements question. Uh, Leon, that you have there essentially was the parent company. So the parent company had entered into a joint arrangement with another entity to get joint control. And those adjustments that, that you have there you had to adjust the property plant and equipment on the face of the SFP. You had to adjust the receivable on the face of the SFP. In terms of the actual profit figure, well, you would just have credited profit. So essentially that profit would have been credited to your group retained earnings, which is there is it as, as your standard working five. Okay, so you need to increase the receivable on the face of the SFP. And then to make it balanced, you need to credit the retained earnings in working five of the parents. OK, your group retained earnings. All sounds quite a lot, doesn't it? Uh, work through the example again. Have a play around with, with some of the questions in the study text. Uh, there may be in, in the revision kits, maybe just an odd example to do with joint arrangements. And here, the more difficult, I think, joint operation. Joint ventures, you should have no problems with whatsoever because all it is is equity accounting. OK. Other than that, that brings to a close this nice, short, sharp session on joint arrangements. I will go through there and see you in the next chapter when we go through there and start to look at more complex aspects of group accounts.